We have the following in our scorecards within the period under review. Landmark strategic and fact-finding visit to Mali, an eventual gradual evacuation of the trapped victims of human trafficking in Bamako and its environs, setting up of task forces in Delta, Ondo, Ekiti, and training of the existing one in Edo State with the help of our ABLE partners, UNODC. This noble action has enhanced robust collaboration from grassroots stakeholders that has made stakeholders, especially the state government, to take issues of human trafficking as their own projects, bearing in mind that victims of human trafficking are their indigents. And lastly, it brings effective coordination in the areas of rescue, rehabilitation, and empowerment. Advocacy visits and landmark presentation on the human trafficking situation in Mali at the plenary of the ECOWAS Parliament, which was another step towards this year's theme, Call Your Government to Action. Expanded awareness and enlightenment activities across the country with special attention to remote locations and settlements. Engagement with traditional rulers such as the Deji of Akure, <coughs> Oba of Lagos, Akran of Badagri, and other traditional rulers around the border communities. Advocacy and sensitization among actors and stakeholders, namely drivers, law enforcement officers, civil society organizations, government institutions, and other partners within the ECOWAS West African sub-region. The areas visited include the motor parks and borders in Badagri, Republic of Benin, and Togo. Employment of victims of human trafficking rescued and trained through higher institutions by the agency, engagement with the aviation industry, increased prosecution and conviction, bringing the total conviction to 403. The emerging tricks and trends in human trafficking, gentlemen of the press, I wish to use this opportunity to alert the nation on the emerging tricks and trends in human trafficking, which should be urgently addressed in order to protect our loved ones. Due to the unbearable operational heat unleashed on the unpatriotic human traffickers in the country by operatives of NACTIB, these criminal gangs have now devised other means of achieving their dastardly acts. Some of the tricks involve rolling out advertorials calling for the recruitment of young Nigerians as drivers, nurses, maids, and other professionals, fake offer of scholarship, non-existing football clubs in some of the notorious Middle Eastern countries. As lofty and enticing as these vague offers may be on the face value, it is clear that these young promising Nigerians are targets of organ harvesting and eventual death in the process, labor exploitation and sex slavery. Many of them that have ignorantly responded to these invitations are going through hell. Many have died and many may never be able to tell their story, while the few lucky ones are still brooding over their bitter experience. In order to nip this situation in the board, NAPTIB has commenced discussions with various regulatory bodies, such as the International Air Transport Association, the National Association of Nigerian Travel Agencies, and also the Nigerian Medical Association, with a view to enhancing their collaboration with the agency to ensure that their members do not aid or abet 
human trafficking. Similarly, NAPTIP has concluded plans to engage with officials of the embassies concerned while serious efforts are being made to review the legal provisions on labor recruitment, which is presently domiciled with the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment. Certainly, any law that opens its windows for the indiscriminate recruitment of our citizens, even in the face of terrible dangers in the destination countries, is repugnant and inconsistent with good conscience, and such should be reviewed. Today, the United Nations and the government of Nigeria have the opportunity to join the international community to reflect on what each of us can do to decrease vulnerabilities to trafficking or the risk uh, that, that follows from such vulnerabilities, particularly those affecting women, children, and young people. This year, we are focusing to, uh, on highlighting the importance of government action, as the DG mentioned. But the call to action is not only to government. We encourage everyone to take action to prevent this heinous crime, including state and local governments, civil society actors, such as Nactal Present, the media, uh, and I'm very happy to see all of you here today, the private sector, religious leaders, and all of our traditional leaders.